All right, so welcome back to the show, guys. It is me, AD, similar to the guys. To guys, we're doing our Europa Conference League qualifier playoff round. So let me go ahead and explain how this works, guys. Basically, if you if the team manages to win, they're in the Europa Conference League. Now, if they lose, uh, well, you're out of Europe. You're out of Europe entirely. It's basically you're either in it or you're out. There is no consolation. There's nothing on like that. Because, you know, in the Champions League Europa League, there's always a consolation of the previous one. There's nothing below this. This is the lowest you can get. get. So, it's going to be very, very sad to see, um, you know, these teams get eliminated after working so hard. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. So, let's go ahead and start with the first fixture, we, which we have is Shakhtar K versus M. Masibitel Aviv. Shakhtar, Shakhtar Krangangna. Now, for me, this is a really good fixture because I have seen at times Mesebi Alto. I think Mesebi Tel Aviv have done fairly decent in the Europa League. You know, I think they've done well. You could look at their age and all demographics and all that. You could see their most valuable player right here in the previous games. They have never played against each other, I believe. And so it is going to be quite interesting to see how this pans out. And in my personal opinion, I'm going to say that... Um, Masibi El Tel Aviv will make it through. As I said before, they have the better players. They seem to know what they're doing more, and their coach is more renowned, right? Although I will say the current coach of theirs has been appointed fairly recently, so maybe it's a bit skewed to some extent. However, the other coach has also been relatively new as well. So, you know, all in all, I, I think for me, this one, I expect Masibi Tel Aviv um, to progress, I expect this guy, Strip Risha, to have a good game. You know, should be a really interesting one. Should be really interesting indeed. Moving on next to the next one we have, it is uh, Copon Pausori versus FC Union Berlin. Union Berlin last season, Bundesliga, they were very, very, very close to making the um, Europa League, you know, and they just about missed out. But, you know, at least they got a chance the Europa Conference, the Europa Conference League qualifiers. And you can see right here, this is the formation they're going to go with. And I'm really interested to see how these players will do. Rano is a really good goalkeeper from my heart. Federich, Konache, Besamit, you know, Petre, Kadira, Osterne, Haraguchi, Rayson, Velmetri, of course. I think Kadira, Haraguchi will be the players to look out for. They will probably be the best players. And you could the age right there. It's going to be cool. What interesting, and you can look at it their most valuable players, 11 million guys. Mercedes Federovich, you know, so, and you can see right there, guys, the coach, 1.72 points per match, and where the other guys got 1.74, and, you know, you can see right there's the old expenditure and all that. So, in my personal opinion, I think all roads are heading towards a Union Berlin win. The first leg's away for them, and so I reckon the second leg, they should be able to get the job done and, make it through to the Europa Conference League. And so let's see how they do in the Europa Conference League. All right. So the moving on, the next one is Rakok Sezrike versus Ghent. Um, this one should be really interesting. You can look at the play, you can look at the age and the demographics and all that. It's going to be quite interesting. And you look at the players. This player in particular is pretty big good. Also, yes, it's a very good player. 6.05 million market value, which is pretty awesome. He is 1.65 and, you know, it's a fairly decent one for it, you know, 1.8 per points per match, 1.53. You know, you can relatively look here. This one's been more recent, and that one's been more late. And I just think for me, guys, I think uh, Ghent should win this. You look at the, I think Ghent for me have the better players. I think they have the superior team. And um, don't get me wrong, this team could prove me wrong. Rocco, this team from Poland could prove me wrong. But I reckon the Belgian team should prevail on this one. And you can see right, guys. They have some good players. Let's look at some of the other players they have just just for curiosity's sake. So we have Simon Bouillot, Rolf Fortan, Nagandu, Anders Tenich, Osan. Interesting players. So you okay, I'm not gonna go through everyone. However, you can see this right here. It's a really good players. The top arrival as well. Interesting. Top goal scores. Interesting. And this is their most recent formation. So you would expect a team of this kind of caliber. I would say we should probably see that tomorrow, you know, maybe even even stronger because, you know, that was August 15th. So they might go with a more full strength team and maybe they have rotated the players for this game. So, you know, I, I reckon they should be able to prevail. I reckon they should be able to prevail. Moving on next to the next one we have it is. So this is the fourth one, guys. We have FC Florida Tahain versus Shamrock Rovers. 
Uh, this one should be a really interesting one. You can look at right here, guys. The last two meetings they've actually played against each other. It's been a nil-nil draw. Shamrock Rovers actually won one nil in the previous one. And so, in the head-to-head -head wise, it is favoring Shamrock Rovers here uh, for this one. And I just think that in itself was a really interesting thing to look at there. Um, and I think for me, what I'm looking at most is to see how this play reduced. Um, Dano Moderni, $303,000. And then you have Georgia Hangon, you know. 605,000. So it's going to be quite interesting, you know, to see how it pans out. You know, and I'm looking at this right here, guys. I think for me, you could tell that it's a really evenly close match. I think this is a very close match indeed. <sighs> for my prediction, guys, my prediction, I'm going to say Shamrock Rovers progress from here. I think this team from you can see there, um, this team is from, I want to say Estonia. Yeah, this team is from Estonia. That's from Ireland. So I reckon that Shamrock Rovers should progress here from this one. Um, it should be really interesting, though. It should be really interesting. Chris Turner has actually scored the goal for the last round. However, he's not at a club right now. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how it happens. And, you know, they got some missing players, too. You can see Neil Furzigret will be not be playing, it seems like. And Mark Unders will not be playing. So regardless, guys, I think Shamrock Rovers should progress. I'm not going to go, like I said before, guys, I don't really have time to go too in-depth into these games, you know. I just want to do like a quick prediction for you guys because there's so many games to predict, guys. So we'll be here all day if I go really in depth. So I'm sorry. I do apologize when I'm going more into depth. You know, I try my best, but you know, as I said, guys, it's just not possible. The time constraint. Okay. So the next one we have is Korarbek FK versus Aberdeen FC. This would be a really good one. You can see right, guys, look at the the facts and the figures combined, which is really interesting. Korarbek Korban Korbev. Uh, he's been um. That's the current coach. He's been appointed since July 1st, 2008. Dang, that's been a long time. And he's only got recently appointed. So it's going to be really interesting. So we have Abdel Zobair versus Lewis Ferguson. These are the most valuable players for both teams. The two teams have never played against each other. And so we have the quarterback FK. This is from a team from Azerbaijan. And this is a team from, what is it from? It is from Scotland. So... You know, it should be a really interesting one because in my personal opinion, guys, I'm going to go with a bit of a different prediction here because normally I would say Aberdeen. However, I'm going to go with a wild card. Pred actually, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for this one, guys. I'm going to say quarterback FK actually managed to get the job done. I just want, I just have to pick some upsets, guys, because like some guys, you guys know in qualifiers, there's always some kind of shock. And I feel like this might be one of the shocks, you know. I'm really looking forward to see how he does. Abdul Zohobi, 29 years old, versus Lewis Ferguson, who is currently 21 years old. So it's going to be quite interesting, guys. A really good battle, and I'm going to go with a different pick for that one, guys. So it should be really interesting, indeed. So the next one you have is FK Zalgiris versus Avilnos versus, versus FK Bodo slash Um, This one should be a really interesting one. You can see right, guys, the all-time results. One win for Bodo Glimit, which is really good. 2-1 a win for Bodo. Um, you can see right, guys, the Valdemar Chubin versus Ikonuk Kunsan. You can see right here, guys, he's already won one match before. And you can see, wow, this is a team that's been really, really good. You can tell you can tell this is a team from Norway. You can tell 1.76 mil. And then you have, wow, it's been really interesting. I really like what this team has been doing. And I think all roads are heading towards a Boda slash Gimlin to win. Which country they're from? They're from, is that Lithuania? Yes, that is Lithuania. So I'm going to say they probably should prevail on this one. This one does seem like a better matchup for them. You can see the top fixture goal scores. You have Luvi Atoll with one goal. These All these players have one goal. And so it's a, it's a really interesting one. And I think Bado should win this one, guys. Bado should win. Over. We can't count as Algris. Okay. Count them out. Can't count them out yet. Count them out at your own peril. Hapo Bull Shivi versus Amritus Fragamisti. It's a really interesting one. You can see right, guys, this is the current value market by 1.32 mil. You can see all the demographics, Colombia, and then is that, is that Cyprus? I think it's Cyprus. Yes, that is. 2021, 2019. So both these managers are relatively new to the team. You know, um, you could probably make a stronger argument that the, um, eh, actually, never mind. So, you know, as I said before, guys, it's going to be quite interesting to see how both of these teams will do. You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing this, how this match prevails, you know. Um, for my money, though, I'm going to say... Uh, where are they from? So that's from Cyprus, and that is from uh, Israel. So I'm going to say Hapo Bir Shiva will make it through, guys. They seem to have the better team, and uh, yeah, I reckon they should be able to progress. 
Okay. So, yeah, we're going to move on to Riga FC versus Lincoln Red Ems. I think this is the team that got knocked out. Um, I think that's, I think I talked about this team earlier. I think they were eliminated earlier from the Europa League, I want to say. I think they might have been. Um, I forgot, honestly. Let me go check. Just my own record. Fixtures. Fixtures by competition, so let's see. Yes, they were in the Champions League qualifiers. That's right. I remember I was talking about this team. So they were in the Champions League qualifiers, then they got knocked out, then they went to the Europa League. Oh, wow. Dang, okay, I see now. So they're from Gibraltar. Interesting, interesting. So I, I remember I was discussing about them earlier. I remember I discussed Riga FC. Where is this team from? Oh, come on, I clicked the wrong thing here. Oof. This is from, I don't know what league is, I don't know what country is that. Is that oh, that's a league. Lat Latvia, Latvia is a league, okay. Latvia is a country, guys. I'm sorry, guys, that took a while. Just wanted to check that real quick. Um, As you can see right here, wow. Lee Kasserny, Gibraltar. Wow, the market values are only available for both players, and they have actually most loyal players for both teams, so it's going to be really interesting. Latvia versus that. Um, Guys, for this one, guys, I think I'm going to go with Riga to prevail on this one. Um, I just think that for me, they have... I just feel like we're going to see some shocks, and I think this, will be, this might be another shock. They seem to... Uh, I think they might be able to do is the fact that they have like a younger team, they have more national, less national team players, they have more, they have more foreigners. I think I could you be used to prevail in this one, and I think it should be a really good game, indeed. So let's see how that pans out. One has to FC Victoria Pleasant versus CSK Sofia. So this would be a really good one. Um, which country are they from? Let me just check. They're from Bulgaria. Yes, that's from Bulgaria. And is that from it's Czech Republic, right? Yes, that is from Czech Republic. So it should be a really good one. Wow, you look at the current coach. Well, okay, interesting. Most valuable. So for me on this one, guys, I think, wow, he's actually won a match against him. So um, FC Victoria Pleasant. I'm pretty sure I've seen this team before in the Europa League, if I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen them before. I'm not gonna go in depth and look into that because that's gonna take too much time. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain I've seen them before in the either in the Europa League. I'm pretty sure I've seen them before in the Europa League. So, uh, yeah, I think for me, guys, I think I'm gonna say for this one, guys, I'm gonna say CSK Sofia actually make it through for this one, guys. Um, despite the fact that they lost the other game, I think this will be a really good one, and I just feel like they're just gonna do it, man. They're just gonna do it. I just have this feeling. I'm not sure why. But I feel like we're going to see a shock. We're going to see a shock, guys. And I think this might be another shock. But who knows, man. I think this will be a really good one. Lucas Kavlich, 26-year-old versus a 20-year-old. So interesting there. Moving on next to the next one. So, yeah, guys. A lot of games we got to discuss. We have Nef Nefti Baku versus Mesebi Hafi. Um, so they got some most valuable players for both teams. Interesting here. Samer Avsov versus Barako Barak Bakur. Um, this is from Israel, I think, right? Yeah, it's from Israel, I believe. And this team is from, I want to say, is that Kazakhstan or something? No, it's Azerbaijan. I'm an idiot. It's, it's, it's Azerbaijan. I should have known that, guys. Very, very sorry about that. Um, I think for me, this one, guys, I'm going to go with Masabi al Hafi to prevail. Nati, Nati al Hivi. Wow, very, very good. 1.6 mil. 76 and this guy is like 29 so it's, it should be a really good one but i'm going to say he prevails for this one and you can see he is more like it seems like he has the um the more she wanted although they do have some big injuries to look into here they have two three players injured so that actually could be the decider and be the difference but i still think they have enough quality oh their most valuable player won't even play guys he he has a calf injury oof Maybe I should revert my prediction, but no, nah, I'm not going to change my mind, guys. I'm not going to change my mind. I keep my mind. I'm sticking with it, okay? So moving on next to Lask versus St. Johnston FC. Yes, I've seen Lask before, guys. This is a team that has qualified for the Europa League in the past. 
And I'm going to say last should prevail. Yeah, Marsage versus Al Ali McKinn. This is a team from, I want to say, Scotland. And this is a team from Austria. So I'm going to say Lask actually make it through for this one. I think there were the, I think Manchester United have played against them, I want to say, like at the round of 32 last season in the Europa League. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm going to say Lask should prevail for this one, guys. Moving on next to Transabor versus Roma, I think that is. So this will be Jose Mourinho's first competitive match, I reckon. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does. Obviously, we have the Nico Zanilo. And obviously, I'll do my Serie A preview very, very soon indeed. So check that out, guys. I haven't made that yet, but I'm going to make that very, very soon for you guys. So obviously, a player to look out for. A very, very talented player indeed. Hopefully, he's fit right now because I've seen last season he was not fit for most of the season. Abdullah Vici, um, you have, and wow, I'm going to cut here. So yeah, I think for me, guys, this should be a really good match. Um, you look at the starting lemons it's already right here, guys. You have Rui Patricio, a very, very good goalkeeper indeed from Wolves, a very, very good uh, player indeed. They have Calfori, a very decent left back. Then you have Mancini, Smalling. Smalling had a really good season with Roma, I believe. Crestor, they have Crescente, Pellegrini, Mikatan, El Sharawi, Zanilo, and then you have Summer. And then remember, guys, Roma have made the sign in Tammy Abraham, guys. Tammy Abraham has now joined Roma. And Edin Dzeko has left Roma. So it could be really interesting to see how Tam Abraham is going to do in this team. I'm hopefully hoping he can have a great career at Roma. Obviously, I don't want to go too much in depth with Roma because I want to save that for my Serie A preview, which should come out tomorrow for you guys. Or Friday, actually, I think I'm going to have. Um, but anyhow, um, still a very good team in DJ Jose Mourinho. I'm looking to see what he does. And I think Roma, for me, they should be able to prevail for this one. Although they have some injury doubts with Chris Smalling being out for the first leg, it seems. Against Lil Valeri. Leonardo Spinazzola. Oh, yeah, Spinazzola had a, such a good Euros, man. This guy had a really good Euros, and unfortunately, um, he's likely to miss this game. So I, I think for me, guys, I'm going to say Roma should prevail quite comfortably. I don't think this will be really that big of a challenge. But you never, never know, guys, because, you know, Roma, as I said before, guys, this is a team that's been pretty disappointing a lot the last couple of seasons as far as in Europe is concerned. All right, so let's move on to the next one. We have the next one at is uh, FC Basel versus Hammerby. So, yeah, I think for me it should be really good when you look at the Basel team. Wow, they already got the straight 11 there. And it's true. So you have Lindmar, Pelmond, Colmet, Lopez, Lang, Casame, Quintela, Stonker, Esposito, Arthur Cabral, Amalas. I think it's Arthur Cabral guy is really good. I, I remember um, he had a – I remember I was um, he was a pretty good player for them. So – Keep an eye on him. He's Yeah, he's the most valuable player. And so where the teams are from? I think this is from, I want to say, Switzerland. Yeah, this is a team from Switzerland. Is this a team from Sweden? Yes, it is Sweden. So interesting. I think I'm going to say Basel should make it through, guys. Basel should make it through despite the fact that the home team here, which could be a disadvantage for the second leg. Or it could be an advantage in some ways. So you can see right there, guys, they do have some injury doubts right here. Wow, three injured players indeed. So let's see if whether the players will be fit or not. Moving on next to the next one is Folo Esk versus Kairut Almari. Uh, should be a really good one, guys. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be a good one. Like so you can see right, guys. Wow. 2.53. That's their most valuable player of 220,000. I think this one, guys. I think Kairut Almari should prevail for this one, guys. They, they, they're they seemingly uh, more. Uh, they have the better players, it seems. More valuable players, that is. And so... It's fair to say. And wow, this coach is really young. 37 years old. That's a really young coach. You don't really see coaches that young these nowadays. So hopefully you can do well. And, you know, it's going to be quite interesting, guys. As I said, though, I still do believe that this team should be able to make it through. Kramit Almaty. So this is a team from Kazakhstan, right? And this is a team that is from, let's see where this team is from. This team is from Luxembourg. So it should be interesting there. So then moving on next to the next one we have is Renz versus Rosenberg. Rens for me, man, obviously the player to look out for is at Kamavinga. He is their most valuable player, which I is quite astonished. You look at that difference in value, man. It's like That is a huge, huge difference, man. Huge, huge gap indeed. And for Geneso, man, this is an opportunity for you to finally do something. And for Rens in particular, man, they, I, I really do believe that this is, the this is the chance for them to actually do something, you know. Because this is a good team. This is a good team. Remember, guys, they were in the last season's champions, like, you know, and so this is a team that should be competing in a high regard. They should be able to make better progression here. And this, they're going against a team that's from Rosenberg that they really should be beating, right? You look at the, you look at the league they're from. They're from Norway, right? It's a France versus Norway kind of thing. 
And I reckon that Rens should be able to progress through. Let's see who the other valuable players are. Can I see? Let's just look at the Ren. Let's just look at the um first team. I just want to see who they have because I did a preview for them for the um League One. So yeah, we have Gomin, Wow, Celine, the interesting Traore, Tot, Jeremy Doku, Gurasi, Niang. So. Should be really interesting, guys. Should be really interesting indeed. And I, I reckon Ren should be able to progress through. Ren should be able to. I say should because I don't really have a lot of truck faith in them. Sometimes they do tend to screw up. Next one was RSC Anderlecht versus Vitisi Arman. Um, should be a really good one, guys. You can see right, guys. Wow. Three almost. That's like about like double. That's like almost like a. That's basically more than double, guys. That's. They, yeah, that's basically more the double. You can see how much more valuable he is. Verstron versus Golbinu. And yeah, guys, I think for me, guys, this one should be a relatively straightforward win, I want to say, for Anderlecht. I think Anderlecht should be able to make it through. And you look at the amount of players that have injured for Vitissa Armand. So it, 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 it it's looking really dicey for them, guys. And so Anderlecht should be able to make it through regardless. And I think they should be able to. And Vincent Company is their coach, which is interesting. I'm a former Man City legend, of course. So good luck to him, man. And Andrew Licht. Good luck to them as well. So we have Sebastian versus FC Copenhagen. Should be a really good one, guys. You know, Copenhagen. I think they're in the 2019-2020 round of 16, I want to say. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while. You know, you got Jonas Wynn, a very talented player indeed. And then you have Oma Coyote. And let's see the market value. It's, it's a relatively around similar. So it's a I would say it's almost like an even game in some regard. Um, you can look at the club members, so it is huge. And I think FC Copenhagen, they should be able to make a three. Look, the fact amount of injuries and the players are missing for Sivaspor, it's going to be very difficult for them to um, to not make it through. So, yeah, I'm going to say Sivas, I'm going to say Copenhagen should be able to progress. Okay, moving on next to the next one. So, FK Jablonica versus MSK's Lenini um, should be a really good one. You can see right, guys, the coaches for this. And let's see the market value for this. Most valuable player. Wow, it's none not not either none of these players are either a million, which is really crazy, you know. Um for me guys, I'm gonna say so this, where is this from? Is this from Slovakia and this is a team that is from Czech Republic. So I'm gonna say Jablonik will make it through, guys. I think Jablonik will make it through. I just have this feeling. Okay. So yeah, let's move on next to the next one we have. It is Fire Nord. Versus Elvisborg, a Feyenoord. Um, you know, it's a good team indeed, guys. They did, they're doing pretty relatively well in the, um, what's the thing called, the Air Divisi. And wow, guys, 20 times more. Mark, Marco Sensi, that is their best player, um, their most valuable player, that is. And he is a center match, 24 years old. Very, very promising indeed. And I really do believe that Feyenoord should be able to beat this team. They're like, so much superior to them. Elvisborg, where are they even from? This is you know, from Netherlands, by the way. Where are they from, guys? Where are they from? They're from Sweden, so, you know, there's that. So we're all getting down to the business end, guys. We have three more fit games to predict. I want you guys to comment down below your predictions as well. So we have Pock versus Ridjika. Um, This one should be really good, guys. I'm um, looking forward to this one, too. I think Pock probably are their favorites. They got, wow, and Ingenstein. Some work, so it's interesting, and yeah, I, I think Pock should win this, guys. Pock should win this, they have the better players, indeed. And so, although they do have some injury concerns, a bit of injury concern, like three players are currently out, so that could be devastating for them. But, um, I, I still think they should be able to go fine. And wow, their most valuable player is actually out for Pock, so that could be a big absence, indeed. So, you know, I, I still am gonna say Pock should do this, but maybe Rich Cup can do it as well. You know, and then finally moving on to the penultimate game we have, it is FC Pocos de Ferrer versus Tottenham Hotspur. Now, I just want to say this right now, guys. Tottenham Hotspur have not put Harry Kane. I don't think Harry Kane is in the start. Uh, Harry Kane didn't get selected for this team amidst his transfer rumors. There's a lot of links for him to go to Manchester City. You know, that's the preferred destination. And it also does seem like, and I think Ndombele has also been left out as well. So let me go check the Tottenham Hotspur. Um, let me check through my phone and who has been who has been left out of the team. So, you know, Tottenham Hotspur. Let's see. This is kind of important for them. So let me see. Tottenham Hotspur. So who is out? So squad. Oh, that's the wrong thing, guys. That's the wrong thing. So 
Where is their um Should be here guys, so should be here in the website. Let me see news. Where is it guys? Where is it? Should be. Okay, here we go. So it says right here, Harry Kane is not going to be in the Tottenham Hotspur team for the uh, Europa Conference League. And so, I feel like I just saw, like, let me just see real quick. Let's just see who's, okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, let me just see who's in the Tottenham team. So Tottenham. So when Dombly and Orier is left out, yes, Orier is left out. Interesting, guys. Interesting indeed. So that's really, really interesting indeed to see them miss out. So let me look at their conference league. Let me just look at the Wayful website. They it should probably be here, guys. Squad. Let's see who their squad is, guys, because that's gonna be very key. So they have Loris, Golini, Austin, Doetri, Regulon, Chris Romero, Davidson Sanchez, Joel Wadon, Eudaira Sassanon, Tanganga, Ben Davis, Carter Vickers, Bakosti Hoiberg, Son, Winks, Brian Jill, Sissoko, Lo Celso, Deliali, Bergwijn, Lucas Moore, Clark, and Harry Kane has actually been in the team. Wow, guys. So, that's interesting. Kane actually got selected. I saw somewhere that Kane didn't get selected. So, this is the official UEFA website. So, I think Kane did get selected because... This is official, right? This this should be the most legitimate, right? And as you can see, I didn't mention it. I didn't mention Ndombele Orier. So you know, as I said before, guys, Tottenham Hotspur. They should be able to beat this team. Where are they even from? They're from Portugal. It it should be a good one because it should be a close game, you know. But as I said, Tottenham Hotspur. They should prevail. I mean, look at the market value for Harry Kane: hundred and thirty-two million. That's how much he's worth, man. That is ridiculous, man. That is insane. You know, he's looking at his record. Wow, he's actually drawn more times than... Wow, this should be interesting. Eight matches, two wins, four draws, two losses, 1.25. And he's actually never even won against Esperto Santo, which is even more interesting. So, you know, um, Stefan Estrucro is their best player, it seems. And yeah, Tottenham Hotspur, man, they should be able to make it through for this one, guys. And I reckon they should. All right. Moving on into the final game that we have is Santa Claus versus Partizan Belgrade. And, yeah, guys, so it should be interesting. Let's see their most valuable player for both teams. And, wow, it's actually the same. It's actually a tie, guys. It's actually a tie, which is interesting. This is probably the first time we had a tie here. Carlos Jr. versus Nemanja Jovic, 19 years old, versus another 26-year-old. So that's a bit interesting there. You know, it's interesting. Um, For me, guys, I think, let me see, Santa Claus, they're from Portugal, right? They, yeah, they should be from Portugal. And this is a team that's from Serbia. So, it's a really close one, guys. It's a really close one. And you know what, guys? I'm going to go with the surprise one. I think Partizan Belgrade would make it through. Because I would say Santa Clara, but as I said before, guys, I just want to predict upsets. I just want to predict upsets, guys. And I'm going to say Partizan Belgrade make it through, guys. So, that's all the games, like I said before, guys. I want you guys to comment down below. This is like a 28-minute video, guys. So, if you guys have made it this far, let me know in the comment section below. And we're going to use Transfer Market from now on for the qualifiers. And maybe, you know what? I might just use this from now on, guys, because this is a, such a good website, you know. So how about you guys decide? Should I use Transfer Market for, for every type of video from now on? Because it is really, really good, and I like Transfer Market a lot. So I don't know. Maybe we should do something like that, you know. So hope you guys remember, guys, remember guys to comment, subscribe. Check out my description below, follow me on Twitter, Discord, and my email. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.